Hi, good day folks and uh, welcome to uh, this new series of videos which I'm putting together and uh, in this series we're going to cover the new Hobson H501A, the 501 Alpha, which will be released uh, early 2017. So we're just going to have a quick look today at a few of the features. I'm going to do some uh, more in-depth videos as time permits, uh, but today we're just going to have a quick look at the quad. Uh, out of the box on how it connects to the uh, uh, iPhone, Apple, or uh, an Android device. So now we get it in the box, um, and inside the box we have the quad, of course, on a few bits and pieces. Uh, one of those being the HT005, which is the Wi-Fi extending module. Um, so that's going to improve the range of your uh, standalone phone or tablet, whatever you happen to be uh, using. You can also find this model with a, a standard Hubson controller um, as normal. And you can actually use both devices uh, together uh, and receive te telemetry and um, video um, on your phone at the same time as the uh, controller. So the first thing we need to do then is to um, connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot. So we power on the quad, uh, scan for the, uh, the quad, and you'll see it's labeled um, Hubson H501A. Do connection to that. If this is the first time, you'll be prompted for the password, which comes with the device, and um, you're connected, hopefully. And once we've done that, then we can go straight to the app, which you can download from the Play Store or from the Apple Store, and um, run the uh, app as necessary. So you were presented then, first of all, with a selection screen, the 507A, the 107A, and the new uh, Hubson gimbal as well. So obviously for this video, we're going to look at the H501 Alpha. So we'll select that. And this takes us to the main uh, screen where we do most of our navigation from, complete with um, shaky background. Uh, but that's the way it comes. And we use the map uh, function to perform most of the functions um, uh, that we do with the, uh, with the phone app. So the first thing it does on power up is prompt for the normal uh, compass calibration and this time we'll get a little um, graphic display of shows what we're doing so we'll rotate it in the horizontal direction first of all and once that's complete we'll do it in the vertical direction and hopefully that will uh, complete the compass um, calibration successfully so that's done and the next thing it says is do you wish to bind this to uh, the device the mobile device that we're working on and you can either say yes or no to this because you can just use this as a telemetry display uh, rather than actually uh, control um, functionality. So we're going to use, a, we're, we're bounded now, and the next thing we need to do then is check the uh, accuracy of the GPS in the phone and see that it matches the GPS in the, uh, in the quad. So this is a normal sort of cross-check you would do on your um, standard controller, but it's going to do it automatically for you uh, in this instance. So always a useful thing to do. Um, and it's a requirement to do this if you're going to use some of the features like follow me, orbit mode, or waypoint flying. It will not let you go any further until you've done this test. So there we've got good GPS accuracy. We're happy with that. And immediately it, it zooms into the, uh, to the main screen and shows you the Google map, which is what I've selected currently as the display, um, as, the, as the main display. So... If you have a quick look at what we've got here, um, we can scroll around uh, normally using pinch method. Um, and now you see immediately that when I'm moving around here, that not all of the uh, map is displaying an image. Now, this is quite important to note uh, because what's happened now is that the phone is no longer connected to the internet, so there's no way of downloading um, any new map information. So you need to be aware of this if you're gonna take your phone out somewhere where there's no signal, for instance, uh, because you won't have any mapping information unless you've preloaded it, or else you can get um, access to uh, your mobile network uh, in the place that you're flying. So obviously, uh, when we zoom in again, this, these tiles were downloaded, and now we can see the full resolution. And our, our Position is shown then by the round dot here, and when you can select, and it'll center the screen in that, or you can select the quad as the center of the screen, and it also gives you a north-up display at the same time. So, 
Along the top row then of the uh, display, we've got the telemetry information, altitude, distance, speed, and we also see the these um, the quad information. Um, you've got the pitch, the roll, and the yaw. Um, the motors are currently locked, <coughs> and the good signal on both the quad and the controller, and we're seeing nine visible satellites, and we've got plenty of battery power, eighty-six percent. The very top right-hand corner. We see the uh, settings icon, which we'll use and go into in a future video to show you those options and see what can be done in there. Uh, moving over to the left-hand side of the screen then, we've got a preview of the video, which is currently running from the quad. Um, we can select that video, like so, and that removes all the mapping information. Now we just switch it back again, and immediately the... Uh, map zooms into our current position okay so below that um, we have this quad icon we click on that it gives you the flight mode functions so F is just normal flight mode where we're going to fly using the joysticks then we've got waypoint mode follow me mode and orbit mode uh, obviously the new ones on there that weren't on the S is the um, waypoint mode and the orbit mode although you could fly orbit mode manually uh, quite easily. Uh, next icon down, the little controller that just switches between control sticks on the screen or normal pinch and squeeze navigation. So there we have the control sticks and you can see the um, indicators at the top middle there as well. Throttle 100%, right and left, elevator up and down, aileron left and right. And you can select the mode of those in the settings screen, which I say we'll, um, we'll do later on in a future video. Um, the next button down there, the next icon, is the return to home function, which obviously doesn't work because we're not flying at the moment, and the motors are locked, as you can see. And then finally, the very bottom icon is the uh, takeoff. So if we do that, it'll prompt you to sure, make sure you really want to take off, really, really, really. And we'll press yes, and there we go. We're in GPS mode, you'll see, as the motors arm, and we are now taking off. You'll just have to take my word for it. I'm trying to bring it down, and I will eventually disarm those motors because they're making a right racket here in the background. So there we are, throttle down to zero again, and the power is off the motors. So um, we could also do the auto return function, and they were just demonstrating it, and you'll see the icon over there. And down to zero again, and there we go. Throw it back to zero. So that's just a quick demo of those two um, two functions. And now we're back to normal using the normal control sticks, as you would in any normal controller. And really, that's about all you need to know for this um, very quick introduction to the application which runs the H five hundred one Alpha. So well. Um, be going into greater detail, we'll be looking at waypoints, we'll be looking at the settings, we'll be going out on the field and flying it and showing you those in real life. But um, hope that's been of some use as an intro and um, keep following and subscribe below and we'll catch you again very, very soon. All the best.